Hey guys, it's Girl Got Game. Welcome back to Backstage Pass, where we are doing Mr. Lloyd Newton's Root. This is the first time we hear from that person, that guy, that wonderful guy, best boy. <laughs> so I thought I'd read his email, because it's been so long since I've done this part of the game. I thought it needed to be redone again. So, from Lloyd Newton, makeup artist needed. Hello, Sean. My name is Lloyd Newton, and I'm directing a test shoot tomorrow for a possible TV series to be filmed here. Unfortunately, the makeup artist we had has been called away by a family emergency, and I'm really hurting to find someone. Sorry for the late notice, but I heard you were a reliable girl, and I was hoping you'd be able to come in and help us out tomorrow. It would mean the world and then some if you did. Loves, Lloyd. And of course, I'll reply. I'll be there. Thank you for thinking of me. Yay, 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 yay! We need you at 5 a.m. tomorrow. It's at Dodgeon Studios in Studio C. The address is on their site. All right. Hardly anyone knows who I am or what I do, or even the fact that I'm here. I guess this is real. I should say I can make it. On the bright side, looks like I've got work. The downside looks like I'm only gonna get four hours of sleep tonight, so we're gonna skip ahead a little bit. We're gonna skip Matthew. Sorry, Matthew. Anyway, I'm just gonna, I don't want to miss Lloyd. There we go. I hurry down the hallway and over to Studio C. Guy with ponytail. Sean, I was just about to come looking for you. Wait, you are Sean, right? A man comes rushing towards me and skids to a halt a few feet in front of me. Yeah, I'm sorry, I got a little bit lost. No, 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 it's fine. I'm just glad you're here. I'm the director and producer, Lloyd Newton. It's a pleasure to meet you. Lloyd shakes my hand enthusiastically. I'm not too late, am I? You're not late at all. I was just fretting that you were going to be carted off with those other girls. What girls? Security said a couple teenage girls tried to crash the filming of a commercial next door. I was worried that you were taken away with them. Oh yeah, I ran into them. No trouble, I hope. No trouble. If you don't count one very beautiful yet skittish model. Great! Lloyd turns and dashes off. Then let's get started! I hurry to keep up with Lloyd, but it's hard to match his pace. I have to speed up to a trot so I won't fall behind. So, how much do you know about this project? Only that it's a test shot right now. It's not like he gave me much useful information aside from that. Right, although we usually call it a pilot presentation. We basically spend one day putting together shots to show networks what the show would be like. If it's good enough, a network will pick it up and we'll get to make a series. Oh dear. Whoa! Excuse me, giant sneezes came on all of a sudden. Ahem. Okay. Sorry, Lloyd, you were saying? We're tentatively calling it Cops and Robbers. Name subject to change. It's a crime drama. Lots of things blowing up. Oh, I see. I try to sound as enthusiastic as him, but my voice sounds flat. Not a fan of explosions? I don't watch TV very often. <laughs> it's probably better for you if you don't. I hear watching violent shows turns you into a criminal. I'm not sure how to respond. He's joking, right? Your job is to make sure all our actors look pretty. He leans towards me and whispers conspiratorially. No easy task, I assure you. Okay, he's definitely joking. The trailers are that way, and I'll see you on set. Lloyd gives me another energetic handshake. I'm looking forward to seeing what you've got. I've heard only great things about you. He bounds off towards the set, leaving me to navigate the trailers. Great things, huh? From whom, I wonder? Well, I can worry about that later. The makeup trailer is fairly standard. I do a quick walkthrough to make sure I know the layout. Okay, this actually looks pretty familiar. It's not too different from other places I've worked. I allow myself a small sigh of relief. <sighs> I can already feel my pounding heart begin to slow down. This might not be so bad. I've worked as mom's assistant on several movies, but taking the lead is such a huge pressure. The door opens slowly, and a familiar looking woman with long brown tresses enters. It takes a moment for me to place her, but after a moment's scrutiny, I recognize her as Selena Haraway. She got into acting when she was just a kid and did a series of movies and TV shows, always playing the angelic and energetic child. My parents loved all of her stuff, and I remember wanting to be just like her when I was young. Now that I think about it, I haven't actually seen her in anything in a long time. Selena sizes me up quickly. Is this wardrobe? 
Sorry, ma'am. Makeup. I'm Sean Gooden. It's nice to meet you. Hmm. You look rather young. Is this your first gig? Not my first time working on set, but it's my first time being lead artist. Do you plan to make a career out of this? I don't know. It's what I want for now, at least. Selena approaches me swiftly and leans down to look me in the eye. Are you just doing this to pass the time until your big break? What? I'm not sure what you mean. Are you planning to become an actress? Oh, no, not at all. This, that sort of thing definitely isn't for me. Her smile doesn't look very happy. There's a hint of loneliness in her voice. Good for you. I stare at her, waiting for her to say anything else. Uh, um, well, I should let you get to wardrobe. Of course. Selena turns and leaves me alone with my thoughts. Oh boy. I don't think she likes me. Or maybe it's more like she doesn't like anyone. I take a moment to lean against the counter and collect my thoughts. The reality of this job finally hits me. Lloyd Newton is really here. Selena Haraway is really here. I can handle this, right? Selena returns and wordlessly seats herself in the makeup chair. I flip on the lights and squint. The lights above the mirror are designed to match the lighting on the set. The switches marked on the panel turn on a series of bright fluorescent bulbs. That's pretty harsh lighting. What kind of scene are we filming? Something in a police station. Right. Cops and robbers. I should have guessed. Are you the cop or the robber? Cop of the hard-hitting, tough nature. I can't help but give Selena's frame a skeptical look. She's no stick figure, but it's certainly not the build of someone in a physically demanding job. Selena notices my sideways glance. It's television, honey. You're pretty or you're comedic relief. Nobody cares about realism. Of course. I nod as quickly as I can. I didn't mean for her to notice, but I don't have a terribly convincing poker face. I'm not sure what else to say, so I focus on the work and try not to think too hard about what she said. I finish my work and take a step back. All done. Selena inspects herself in the mirror. Thank you. She stands, stretches, and heads for the set. I follow behind her, trying not to get lost. We weave our way through a collection of wooden panels and bright lights. Lloyd waves us over as soon as he sees us. Oh, Selena, my beautiful leading lady! He mimes a kiss on each of her cheeks and points to a set bill to look like the interior of a police station. The boys already put your marks down. Selena nods and quickly navigates her way through the fake police station. Not bad, Sean. Tough and beautiful. I only accented what's already there. I think most of the credit goes to Miss Haraway. Honesty is for suckers. Next time, tell me how great you are. <laughs> Lloyd leaps over a pile of wires and races toward one of the cameras without waiting for me to respond. Huh. <sighs> he likes my work. That's the first hurdle cleared, at least. Lloyd makes a small notion with his hand, and the recording light above the studio door lights up. Quiet on the set! Rolling! Cops and robbers, scene 8, take 1. And... action! Selena strides across the set, stopping at the door at the end. She wraps her fingers around the handle, then casts an angry glance over her shoulder. Chief, he's out there killing people without worrying about protocol. We can't keep playing by the same rules. Reset. Still rolling. Selena quickly returns to her mark. Action! Cops and robbers scene 8, take 2. Selena follows the same path. Chief, he's out there killing people without worrying about protocol. If you won't do anything about it, I will. If you won't do anything about it, I will. Without missing a beat, Selena recites Lloyd's improvised line back. Good, good. Reset. Still rolling. Give me something different. Selena returns to her starting point and closes her eyes for a moment. Action! Cops and robbers, scene 8, take 3. At the sound of Lloyd's voice, Selena's eyes snap open. She pulls a gun from her holster and follows the same path across the set. Don't try to stop me! She grabs the door's handle and marches out without another word. Cut! Beautiful! Lloyd leans over the cameraman to check the footage. I rush over to Selena. Just going to touch you up. Selena closes her eyes obligingly and I add a light layer of powder to her face. Alright, reset. We're going again! I scramble out of the camera's view as the rest of the crew gets ready to film again. The rest of the filming follows a similar routine. Each scene is shot multiple times from several angles. Between takes, I touch up any of the makeup that needs to be fixed. Working on a TV show all day proves to be more tiring than I remembered. After what seems like little more than a few hours, Lloyd announces that we're done. 
That's a wrap. Hope to see you all again soon. Everyone applauds politely and the crew begins packing up. Well done, Sean. I knew I could count on you. I'm flattered, but I'm also completely exhausted. You look ready to collapse. Something like that. How do you manage? Hmm. Caffeine, mostly. Oh, and good food. I just found this fun place downtown and it's amazing. The only place I've been that makes it better is Vietnam. That good, huh? Lloyd gives me a cheerful thumbs up. That good. You should check it out sometime. I will when I'm more awake. Right. Get home and get some sleep. And good work today. Thank you. I pack up my makeup kit and head out to the front of the studio. And it's dark. And someone's going to offer us a ride soon. But I'm going to skip past all that and bring you in when we have to set up our schedule, guys. All right. We made it to our schedule. So I have a scheduled exercise so we can run into... Professor Merriweather, and Lloyd is basically the same as Matthew as far as stats, except it's the reverse. Uh, fashion is the primary stat, and charisma is the secondary stat. And otherwise, we'll see how this goes. I'm very excited to see what, where Lloyd's route takes us. I trust by now you've all purchased your necessary texts. Remember that it's not enough to merely purchase the book. You will have to read it for it to have any effect. Remember to go through your things regularly and use them, or you'll find yourself very disappointed. Professor Cabalt has a point. I should look through my stuff and make sure I actually use it. Mm -hmm. We will do. Today seems like a good day to go for a jog around campus. I start slowly, enjoying the fresh air and the time alone. I turn the corner and see Professor Meridia carrying a stack of cardboard boxes. She can barely see over the top of the stack, and it's obvious from her carefully placed steps that whatever she's carrying is heavy. Professor, let me help you with that. I jog up to her and lift one of the boxes from her arms. Thank you. You look familiar. Are you in one of my classes? Calculus 1. My name's Sean. Well, thank you very much, Sean. You didn't have to do this. I don't mind. I'm trying to get a little exercise in anyway. Good choice. A lot of first years tend to get caught up in schoolwork or socializing. A good workout is crucial for your health, and it helps to keep you from getting too stressed. Professor Meridia leads me through the front door of the school library. She places her box on a nearby table and breathes a sigh of relief. Oh, you can leave that there. I hoist the box onto the table next to her. Need anything else? No, that's all I need for now. What's in all these boxes anyway? Books, study guides, and all the materials for the grad student group study. That sounds nice. I don't suppose there's anything like that for us underclassmen. If you're looking for extra help with your studies, there's a freshman tutoring session in the library every Monday night. Thanks, I'll check it out. I'll wave a quick goodbye to Professor Meridia and resume my jog around the campus. Alright, so we unlock that for next week. That's good. So far, so good this week. Benito is already waiting for me when I arrive at the coffee shop. Sean, over here. He puts down a deck of cards in his hand to wave at me. How are you? Um, I'm fine. He tilts his head and inspects me carefully as I sit down across from him. You need to get better sleep. He returns to shuffling his deck of cards idly, stopping occasionally to glance at the top card. I get plenty of sleep. I didn't say more sleep. I said better sleep. Something's on your mind, and it's keeping you from sleeping well. There's just a lot going on right now. Do you want to talk about it? He checks the top card of the deck and frowns. Probably not the card he was hoping for. Um, I'm not sure how to tell him that I'd rather not talk about it, but he seems to realize that. It's fine. In your own time. Anyway, did you start that blog like I suggested? Yeah, but I don't really see how writing a bunch of articles online is going to make money. Well, it's kind of a slow burn sort of thing, but if you keep writing regularly, you'll get more hits. At this point in time, you really need to just keep writing. The more content you have, the better. Got it? Yeah, thanks. Any questions? Um, what exactly was the job you had for me? Ah, that. He pulls out his deck of cards and begins shuffling it again, this time faster than before. I've got this thing coming up at a fancy hotel. They want me to entertain the guests for a night and see how it goes. That's great. Congratulations. Benita waves off my congratulations. 
It's not as exciting as you think. I offered to work pro bono. I think they were more excited about the prospect of free entertainment than me. I was just wondering if you wanted to be my makeup artist for the show. Looks are everything, after all. I'll still pay you, of course. Are you sure you need my help? You seem to be doing fine on your own. Uh, drawing on a bit of eyeliner really isn't the same as a professional job. I can't afford to cut any corners on this one. Well, I'd be happy to help. Great. It's next Friday night. I'll text you the details later. Benito hands me a shiny business card embossed with gold script. I think the card costs more than the drinks here. Thank you. I'll see you then. I stand up to leave, but I'm suddenly struck by a question. Hey, can I ask you something? Anything you want. Why did you call me here if you could have just texted me about all of this? I wanted to see how you were doing with my own eyes. You're definitely the kind of girl who would lie and say you're doing okay just to be polite. Am I really that transparent? Well, from the look of it, whatever you were worried about isn't as bad as before. I'm glad. I hope things continue to get better. See you on Friday. Cafe Diem, come in, buy a drink, and do homework here for a boost in your grade. Sounds good to me. Mm. Well, I fell out of bed. That's a shame. Oh. I opened my eyes slowly. The sun's already shining and my alarm clock didn't go off. Must be a Saturday. I stare at the ceiling. I really don't want to move right now. I'm about to throw the covers back over my head when I hear a knock on the door. I shuffle to the door and peer through the eye hole. Aha! Morning, Sean. Wanna hang out? I glance at my desk and sigh. <sighs> um, I haven't finished my homework yet. Neither have I. Wanna hang out? <sighs> Figures. Fine, what did you have in mind? That bookstore we went to the other day is attached to a mall. Interested? Um, I'm not sure. School just started, and it's not holiday season yet. I figure traffic will be low. And I thought if we went together, it might be easier on you, since you'd be with someone you know. Well, that's true. I'll have to explore eventually, and I would feel a lot better if you came with me. Then it's settled. Whoa, this place is huge. I've never been to a mall with two floors before. Adam and I stare at the mall's spacious interior with awestruck wonder. Everything is so shiny. And huge. People push past us, ignoring the gaping mouths and wide-eyed expressions of the two island kids. I feel like an idiot, but Adam doesn't seem to mind in the slightest. This is going to be great. The two of us make our way through the mall, walking slowly from one store to the next. In the brightly lit store window, skinny mannequins show off the latest fashions. I stop to inspect one. Its neck is laden down with several necklaces strung up with large beads. How on earth could someone wear that much jewelry? Wouldn't your neck hurt? Adam crosses his arms and ponders the question. Maybe she works out. I don't think that's it. It was worth a guess. It doesn't seem like you were trying that hard. So? No way! Are you Adam Eaton? A girl rushes up to us, an excited glint in her eye. Sure am. I am such a big fan! You know, I was following you on Facebook long before you released Late Sleeper. Cool. I'm glad you like my stuff. The girl reaches into her purse and digs around looking for something. I don't want to be too annoying or anything, but if I could get an autograph, that would totally make my life. <laughs> Adam waits patiently for her to find her pen. I can see a few other people looking at us now. Hey, can I get an autograph too? Looks like Adam attracted a lot of attention. Again. I take a few paces back and duck into one of the clothing stores. I'd rather be out of the way when the flood of fans come. Unfortunately, in my eagerness to avoid the crowd, I back straight into someone else. Oh, sorry! I spin around and come face to face with Matthew, furtively ducking behind a rack of clothing. Oh, hi. Um, Matthew, right? Huh? Matthew stares at me, and for a moment I see panic flash in his eyes. You're that girl from the studio. Uh, Sean. Sean, right. He stares at the ground and shuffles his feet back and forth. Sorry again about all that. You know. It's forgiven. He's still not making eye contact with me. In fact, he keeps glancing over my shoulder as if he's expecting to see someone. Is everything alright? Yeah, I'm just, uh... Hiding. 
You seem to be making a habit out of it. His face turns a pale shade of pink. I'm not trying. I'm never gonna do this, it's so mean. Who are you hiding from this time? More scary girls? His face flushes red. Maybe. Well, my friend over there seems to be getting most of the attention right now. He's visibly relieved. Oh good, maybe they won't notice me. Why are you so worried anyway? He glances over my shoulder again. What are you looking at? I spin around to see what he keeps staring at. No. He grabs my shoulder, but it's too late. <laughs> Only a couple more times that I get to see this beautiful poster. Eh, good thing I saved it to my computer. <laughs> Whoa, I mean, I didn't do that. <clears throat> a floor-to-ceiling poster of Matthew adorned in little more than delicate gold chain stares back at me. Flowing script labels him the Golden Prince. Um, wow. You, uh, that's princely. I nod to emphasize my point. I never thought about these posters before, but there's something a little awkward about standing next to the guy who's in it. Th thanks. It's from the summer campaign. I didn't think it would still be up. You don't like it? It doesn't make any sense. How can you advertise clothing if the model isn't even wearing any? I think the point is to advertise being attractive. Oh, but I'm not. Are you kidding? You don't sound very happy about any of this. I thought people liked being models. No, I like it. I mean, I do enjoy the work. It's just everything else. Like having to see this every time I come to the mall. What started as a pinkish blush is rapidly turning into a deep red. And then people recognize me and everyone talks to me. They keep looking at me. Wow, I've never met anyone with this much trouble with people except, well, me. I hate it when I'm the center of attention, too. Matt looks at me, hopeful. You do? Yeah, I have a lot of trouble in crowds, especially when people are watching. Sometimes if there are too many, I panic. My mom always said it was my biggest flaw. I don't think it's a flaw. It might be a hurdle. It's hard to make friends sometimes, and sometimes you're scared. But it's not a flaw. I still wish I could get rid of it. I'm sure you can handle it. I mean, you're talking with me right now and I'm a girl. His eyes widen in realization. Uh... See? Talking with a girl isn't so bad. Well, you're different. How so? You're not asking me for anything. Girls aren't always asking for stuff, you know? How many girls have you even met? Uh... Matthew silently counts out on his fingers and stops at two. Really? Well, two isn't really a good sample size now, is it? Maddie! There you are! A girl with silken locks and perfect skin bounds up to us and quickly entwines her arm around Matthew's. She carries herself with the grace and precision of a trained model, but she's a lot shorter than other models I've seen. H hey. She pouts, showing off her perfectly full lips. Where have you been? I was looking all over for you. And who's this? She turns to look at me and flashes a winning smile. The smile doesn't extend past her perfectly aligned teeth, and everything about her body language is telling me to back away. Sean, I'm just a... um... a stranger, I guess. Well, my name's Nicole. If you're talking to Maddie, I'm sure you recognize me, too. No? She looks horrified. But I'm the Golden Princess! I look back into the store and see a row of posters in the back featuring Matthew and Nicole chained together with delicate strands of gold. The two of them stare seductively at anyone who walks by, their intense gazes promising luxury and beauty for anyone who can afford it. Seeing them in person is kind of surreal. I don't think I'll ever understand marketing. When we met on set, it was love at first sight. He was my prince in the photo shoot, and now he's my prince in real life, too. Matthew's clearly uncomfortable. It's my sister. But Nicole nestles her head against his arm with a contented giggle. <laughs> she gives his arm a tug and drags him towards the exit. Come on, honey, let's get going. But bye Matthew begins to wave goodbye, but Nicole cuts his farewell short and drags him away. A girlfriend? Really? That was the last thing I expected for Matthew. Nicole is shorter than I'd expect for a model, but her hair and face are a perfect match for Matthew's. It's almost like they're siblings. I wonder if she got the job because she matches him. Hey. Oh, hey. I thought I lost you. Where'd you go? 
just in here. I didn't want to be in the way. Sorry about that. That was the opposite of what I wanted for today. I didn't think anyone would recognize me. I'm not sure you can afford to think that way anymore. I know. It's just weird, you know? It hasn't really fully set in yet. Sometimes when I wake up, I wonder why I can't hear the ocean. Then I remember that I'm not home anymore. For a moment, I see a bit of melancholy behind his normally cheerful exterior. He's been working so hard this past year. He hasn't really had a chance to take a break or come to terms with his new life. Ugh. <sighs> Adam shakes his head. I guess it's just something I'll have to get used to. Let's get back to exploring, yeah? Sure. Adam and I resume our stroll through the mall, but nothing else catches our attention. Well, that's enough for today, I guess. Back to campus. Back to campus. Adam drops me off in my room. Thanks for today. No problem. I had fun. Don't forget you had that... Excuse me. Don't forget you have that photo shoot next Tuesday. What? Oh, right. Yeah, thanks. Anytime. Steel City Mall. Come on in and see all our shops. And check your mail. Miss Sean Gooden, after careful review of your student grant application, we are pleased to inform you that you qualify for our Students in Need grant. Your tuition will be waived as long as you maintain a grade point average of 2.0 or higher. Your GPA will be checked on a monthly basis. Failure to maintain your grade may result in loss of your grant or expulsion. Welcome to Steel City University. This message board is for students to connect with each other and discuss anything that interests you. Please try to use common sense when posting. This is not a board for porn, illegal downloads, or hate speech. Durr. Alright. And of course, going there doesn't really help me because Lloyd's not on, on there at all. But... Um... What's our status again? Eight fatigue. Should I sleep? I think I'll go shopping again. Hmm, today seems like another nice day to go to the mall. I'm not sure I'm still up for being around that many people alone, so I'll take Adam along just in case. Get those tickets. Ooh, Brains and Puzzles here actually has the newest volume of Planetos, and the full season set of Night Errant. You sound excited. Is it my fault that we had to wait for months to get anything back home? At least it taught you patience. No, it taught me that I don't like waiting. Naturally. A woman with a clipboard approaches us. Excuse me, would you like to take a short survey? You'll be entered to win one of several prizes, like a new car. Adam and I look at each other and he shrugs. Sure, why not? We don't have anywhere to be. The woman looks relieved. From the look of her clipboard, she hasn't gotten many takers. So, do you or any of your family members work in the movie, music, or entertainment industry? Well, I'm a makeup artist. Does that count? Um... She glances down at the near-empty list of names on her clipboard. Should be fine. Um, I'm afraid I'm a professional singer, though. Oh. Uh, never mind, then. Thanks anyway, you two. What about me? I thought you said I counted. Unfortunately, if you have a family member in the industry, you can't take part, and since your brother is... Oh, I'm not her brother. You aren't? Oh, I'm so sorry! It's just that you two really look like siblings. I mean... It's fine. We get that all the time. But that's great! It means I can still give you the survey! She flips through her clipboard eagerly and reads off the first question. How many movies have you seen in theaters in the past two months? Um... I quickly review the last two months of my life. Most of it was consumed with Adam's summer tour. None. She raises an eyebrow and checks off a box on the sheet of paper in front of her. Well, that pretty much negates the rest of the questions, so I guess we're done. Sorry I couldn't be of more help. No, it's fine. We're looking for responses, not people who watch movies. Now if I could get your email address, we'll be all set. She offers me a pen and I write down my address on the bottom of the sheet. Thank you so much! She heads off to solicit more survey responses from people as they pass by. That was nice of you. It wasn't anything, really. Do you think you'll win anything? I've never won a raffle in my life. Luck is for other people, like you. <laughs> I'm sure I've got enough luck for the both of us. Where should I shop today? Let's go to Brains and Puzzles. Because I don't think Lloyd actually cares about what we wear at all, so that's something. Um, I wanted to get the movie he... Yes, the award-winning spy thriller series directed by Lloyd Newton. Thought I'd get that. Um, and Knight Errant. And... Rivenwell 
online. That's most of my money gone. As I head out the door, a young woman comes barreling around the corner. Ah! She skids to a halt, stopping a hair's breadth away from knocking me over. Are you okay? The woman steadies herself and fixes her jacket. Yeah, I'm fine. Just didn't see you there. She glances at the book I just purchased. Hey, Rivenwell Online. Nice. I work for them, you know. Are you part of the development team? Nah, nothing like that. Marketing. Social media, mostly. It's my job to promote the game and get new players. If you're playing Rivenwell Online, I see I'm doing my job. Oh, um, I don't actually play. Seriously? If you've got enough free cash lying around that you can just buy books for games you don't play, I've got a better deal for you. I don't... The woman ignores me and pulls out a sheet of paper. She scribbles an address on it and tucks it into the front cover of my book. The stuff there is pretty expensive, but I'm sure you can handle it. The stuff where? At the shop. What does it sell? <sighs> the woman taps her foot. Stuff? Weren't you listening? Uh, okay. Anyway, I'm in a hurry, so I'm out. Later! She waves and marches into the bookstore without bothering to wait for me to respond. I look at the address she left in my book. A shop that sells stuff. How useful. It's a shop where you buy stuff. And now we got a new week to plan ahead of us, so let's see what we got. Hmm. 